Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday night. The uh, end of the weekend here is upon us. It is 10, 17 p.m. West Coast time, Sunday, July 6, 2025. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe looks like um, 3.6 here in the red flag across the uh, Japan area, right around that uh, boundary here of the Japan Trench. Uh, covering the earthquake activity here, looks like uh, looks like there was a 3.5 in there as well across this area of Japan. Southern end, towards off the southern end here of the Nankai Trough, uh, USGS showing uh, five earthquakes out here in the magnitude upper four range. Now, I do want to double check, see what the um, Japanese Meteorological Agency is showing us here as far as uh, earthquake activity goes. This is... Uh, I don't know, maybe an international quake there? I'm guessing that's kind of weird. Un unknown magnitude. But uh, the ones we're looking for is around uh, this area here, the adjacent sea of the uh, Tokara Islands. The latest quake here shows a uh, 2.7 here in the last uh, 10, 15 minutes or so across this area of Japan. Previous to that, a uh, number of earthquakes out there. It looks as though... Within the last couple hours, we've had a slight die down in earthquake activity. Uh, maybe with uh, two or three earthquakes per hour compared to, well, the 10 or 20 that we've seen here uh, yesterday in the past several days. So, just because, though, just because we're starting to go down in uh, earthquake activity right now does not mean that the uh, potential threat out here is over. Uh, obviously, we got some newer activity around the Japan area uh, on the, to the Japan Trench. A lot of uh, pressurization going on out here still. Taiwan southward into the Philippines, Indonesia area as well. Very active conditions, uh, more so than normal, I would say, out here across this area of the uh, plate boundaries. Um, and again, just keep an eye here on the Japan region. Nothing going on here across the Izu Trench into the Mariana Islands for now. But again, the latest quake here up against the Japan Trench could start seeing a little increase in earthquake activity here uh, as we go overnight. And again, here, if you look, you know, there's been uh, two earthquakes so far this hour for the 10 o'clock hour. Previous to that, there was uh, three. And then we had, it uh, looks like, four or five on the uh, 8 o'clock time period. A little bit less previous to that. So it's just, we've seen this before, kind of drop down a little bit in terms of the activity and then all of a sudden it will kick back up again across this area so gotta watch out there hasn't been any main quake yet uh, and that's kind of what i'm watching for out here some signs of uh you know something uh, about ready to happen out here so let's move on past there unless something major happens in this update uh that seismograph station there around japan the one that you want to watch is going to be this one right here uh, the Kagoshima area. There's another earthquake coming in here within the last five minutes. So that's going to be... Uh, let's see here. That's going to be a 3.1 earthquake. See how things are starting to just kick up now all of a sudden? So we could be uh, talking about some uptick going on here right now as we speak. Uh, also, way out here into the Pacific, a little odd quake here, well off of the Hawaii Islands here. In fact, it's around the, the older Hawaii Islands, right? The ones that have been eroded over over time. Of course, the Pacific Plate here uh, moves off to the northwest, and uh, over that hot spot, it will give this type of reading here as it, uh, you know, works its way there to the west-northwest. It's just a general plate movement of the pacific plate so as that plate moves further to the west the hawaii islands there uh, forms some newer um, islands and this earthquake here 4.5 is happening at some of the older ones there from um, you know long long time ago not uh unheard of i i pulled up the historical data out here and looked at it and uh i went 2.5 and above Pretty much since uh, records have been kept out here, and there's a handful of them, but uh, you know, where this 4.5 struck here, it's, it's just not a whole lot, so it's a little rare. There's a 4.9 2013. It looks like further up north here, there was a 4.6 last year, 
a little bit larger quake activity here with a 5.2 back in 1988. And of course, you know, there's always going to be some pressurization and adjustment going on with the, um, you know, these islands that have uh, added weight out here onto the oceanic crust. So it's still, uh, you know, can they can still see earthquake activity out there, but uh, definitely a rare one. I don't, again, we don't see that much activity out there. Uh, no change here to the Big Island with the ongoing building of the Big Island. Uh, let's take a look here at the Kilauea Volcano information here real quick since we're on the uh, topic of Hawaii. Uh, still sitting and waiting for episode number 28 to happen. This is the electronic tilt up at the Kilauea Volcano Summit. Uh, getting close. This is uh, the pause right now, right? We're building up underneath the area, leading up to episode number 28. It's been a rinse and repeat cycle out here at the Kilauea Volcano since uh, December of last year. Just 27, 27 episodes, pretty much on cue here. And I think another day or so, we'll see the return of another eruption there for episode 28. West Coast out here, starting to light up. What do we got out here outside of my neck of the woods? Uh, that's actually in uh, Glen County, it looks like, outside of Willows to the east, west of the Sacramento Valley. I'm not for sure what's out here as far as, uh, I don't know if we got some natural gas operations out there or not. This, I think, is that Ammon Orchard that's out there off of uh, 45, or Ammon uh, Processing Plant, I think, But because uh, there's a lot of Ammon fields out here. That's an interesting one. 15 miles deep for a 2.6 underneath this area. There is some pumping operations out here. Natural gas. That's going to be these pads out here. I've, I have seen them out here. These little checkered pads with uh, uh, tanks on them. But it's not there in that field. It's out uh, a little bit uh, further to the Sacramento River, but deep. That makes me think here that the uh, maybe we got some trimmer activity going on with the Cascadia. Let me check that real quick. Uh, see what we have for the Cascadia trimmer. Well, we do have a little bit. 29 epicenters of trimmer underneath the border there of Oregon, uh, California. This is down into the subduction zone of the Cascadia. Not a big number, but a little bit of uptick after a week of quietness. Nothing really major going on here across Northern California uh, in the southern end of the Cascadia for now. Uh, the Bay Area looks pretty quiet as well from... From this morning, we had a 2.5 there on the San Andreas Fault, but uh, pretty quiet uh, through the afternoon time period. Ridgecrest area and down here across the Tehachapi Mountains, pretty quiet as well. One earthquake in the, uh, wow, how do, you, how do you pronounce that? I'm not even going to attempt to. I'll just say the greater Los Angeles area with a 2.1, nine miles deep underneath this area here for the uh, latest earthquake. Uh, the San Andreas Fault here continues to sleep. Southern California has been... It's been a little quiet out here. While the western areas here of the Pacific Plate have been just rocking and rolling here with earthquake activity. And uh, I don't see Southern California ramping up until we get a little halt of the earthquake activity out here. It's just That's just how this teeter-totter effect goes. I call it the teeter-totter effect because when one area is active over here, uh, the other one's kind of quiet and vice versa. So all the activity out here. Quiet conditions out there across the West Coast for the most part. Uh, one earthquake way up into the Pacific Northwest there this afternoon. Off of the uh, Devil's Mountain Fault. Yep, Devil's Mountain Fault there for a 2.1. Nothing big going on out there across the West Coast for now, but we'll continue to watch it. A couple earthquakes out in Nevada. Texas oil field still getting hit. A lot of earthquake activity. Unfortunately, a lot of flooding going on out there still. Uh, in the central Texas area in the hill country. Not good. I've been through there numerous times. And just absolutely devastating what's going on out there. With the uh, excessive rainfall. Uh, let's see. Alaska. A couple smaller earthquakes up there. Nothing big going on. Only two earthquakes of magnitude 2.5 and above. And those are from this morning. Let's take a look here at the Earthquake 3D Globe. Uh, New Zealand down here, a couple newer quakes, 3.4 and a 3.7. Uh, North and South Island. This one here looks like it's awfully close here to the Alpine Fault. Got to watch that. That's fairly well primed uh, for some big earthquake activity. Look at this earthquake out there in the uh, older Hawaii Islands. Though. That just sticks out like a sore thumb. We just don't see that. That 
crazy. Interesting, though, for sure. Uh, the rest of the globe here got uh, activity backing out, backing off around the Andaman Sea area off the coast here of Sumatra. That's been an area of swarming here. That's kind of taking a little break here. Uh, somewhat larger movement here across the area around the Bandis or Maluka Sea. Um, let's see here. Maluka Sea is over here. So this is going to be off towards the Java Trench 5.0 this afternoon. But uh, really nothing big going on. This is a very deep earthquake, though, underneath the sea region. 341 miles deep for a 4.2 this morning. And, uh, you know, it's it's been active. This whole area has been active, and um, it's continuing. So we just got to watch that closely here, folks. I, I still think this is leading to something bigger. Uh, some movement down south there across the Baja area. 4.4 and a couple smaller quakes up north. Uh, nothing big, just a little earthquake activity down there. Middle America Trench fairly quiet, aside from the typical movement there with some threes. South America looks like there's a three-pointer coming in there for now. Uh, and maybe a 2.7. Uh, looks like the Chile area, Peru Chile Trench southward. Nothing, uh, nothing of any major earthquake activity. Up north, starting to get a little bit of moving up around Iceland and uh, north of Greenland there. I'm kind of curious here. Let's take a look and see when our last decent magnitude earthquake was here. That's uh, going to be that 6.6 .6 down there across the uh, uh, Scotia Sea area, southern end of that uh, plate. 6.3 last month there, so uh, both of those are from last month. That was in uh, Colombia. Bunch of sixes out there in the uh, Mid Atlantic Ridge, and uh, just kind of waiting here, folks. You know, I, I get quite a few questions asking, uh, you know, what's going on with all these earthquakes here? Are we seeing excessive earthquakes compared to years past? And not really. We're actually behind. Last time I checked it here, which is quite a few videos back, but uh, we've, uh, I think, we're about 1,300 earthquakes less than last year. This was about a month ago when I did that uh, little um, information check as far as earthquakes go. But maybe we'll do that tomorrow. But, you know, as of right now, um, we're still even behind in terms of the large magnitude quakes out here. We still have yet to see an eight-pointer. It's supposed to have one every year. This is a map showing, on average, across the planet here, the er earthquakes and the magnitude and how many we should see. Uh, our last eight-pointer was back in 2021. Uh, magnitude 7.0 to 7.9, 15 of them. We're, uh, we're definitely well below that and uh, well below even the halfway mark. And it goes on and on and on. Of course, this is the number of earthquakes on average per year across the planet, 1,300,000. That's a crazy number, right? But these plates are always, always in motion out here. But look at that hole. Oh, that's just a lot of clusterization going on there. But again, that's where all the plates are kind of moving off to. So you expect elevated earthquake activity to happen there. And boy, is it happening right now. So I, but I still think we could see something larger out here. Just watch that closely. Uh, space weather activity. I did see a little bit of roars popping up there on the social media feed this evening. Uh, mainly across the Minnesota area. Looking north. I don't think it's overhead. But uh, there's a little bit of enhancement going on here. Not for sure exactly where this is coming from. Uh, just a typical solar wind stream, I guess. Um, maybe a little bit of BZ component south here. Let's see what we got. Uh, this was put out today. An enhanced solar wind stream containing a south pointing BZ uh, of the interplanetary magnetic field component is currently moving past Earth. So it's got a south on it, and that will allow a little bit of amplification there uh, for the auroras to stir up here at the polar regions. Uh, but nothing big. Uh, I don't, you know, this wasn't even forecasted here. This was green across the board this morning. And now all of a sudden we're getting a little bit of high-speed solar wind stream. And it's stirring things up. But there's nothing on the horizon here in terms of anything major happening. We haven't had any major solar flares. And I don't think we're going to see any anytime soon here. Uh, the solar flare threat is very minimal. Look at that. When was the last time you've seen M-Flare drop to a 5% chance? That is crazy. 
Uh, obviously less than 1% for X-Flare. M-Flare at 75. We'll be lucky if we see one of those. There's not a whole lot of sunspots out here that are capable of producing anything than what they're doing right now uh, with some, you know, B-Flare activity, maybe a low-grade C-Flare. Got this area back here starting to key up a little bit. Uh, but the rest of these are fairly stable. A couple regions coming around the eastern limb here. Hard to tell, though, in terms of complexity, whether there'll be uh, an area to watch with uh, solar flares. Uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on that there in the coming days. Um, a beautiful moon out there. Get out, uh, pending you don't have massive amount of mosquitoes like I do here. I'm going to take a break from that tonight. Mosquitoes are out uh, pretty crazy tonight. Uh, but 89% uh, illuminated moon out there. Beautiful. And uh, here's the far side watch. We'll see if we've got an updated image, which we do. Here's this region over here. Uh, got a day or two before it peaks its head there around the eastern limb. That is former sunspot uh, 4115. Okay, if you, if you think about it here, these sunspots, they just go around. They come around again, and they keep going around and coming around. And they're basically the same sunspots that, we, that were out here weeks ago, just with a new number. Occasionally, we will get some sunspots that pop up out of the blue that are entirely new, but for the most part, they're the same sunspots. It's just they come around and go around, and they never stop, but they always get uh, new numbers there once they come into the Earth-directed view. All right, Storm Prediction Center here. Still got uh, a little bit of noise out there across Oklahoma, uh, Panhandle of Texas northward, it looks like. A little 2% chance here for some tornado, tornado activity overnight and early Monday morning. Uh, main threat is going to be some wind, damaging wind gusts, and a little bit of hail out there as well. Uh, for the day on Monday, for the day, that enhanced zone amplifies here right over Nebraska. Got, uh, looks like a 5% chance there of some tornado activity surrounded by a green 2%. So just a heads up there. Big time wind threat tomorrow with those thunderstorms. Again, focus right over the uh, Nebraska area. That dashed area is where you want to watch out for these, um, you know, these damaging wind gusts. Uh, even some big time hail threat out there as well for to start the work week off. Pretty crazy. All right, uh, let's see here if we got anything new there on the Japan site. Yeah, that one's still at 2216. So just kind of keep an eye on it, folks. We'll see how things play out here. Um, I still think here with this newer earthquake that we've just seen within the last. Um, when was that 3.6 that was at 10.03 so in the last half an hour uh, we may be focusing on a shift of pressurization back up along this side again it's been pretty active down here throughout the day uh, and somewhat south here but we may see things amplify up here we'll have to keep an eye on it in the meantime folks enjoy your uh, Sunday nights we will see you guys back out here in the morning for the Monday morning update Again, seismograph stations out there look pretty quiet for now. Not a whole lot happening here on the ones around the planet. Have a good night, folks.